What's up everybody and welcome to the channel. This is Living in Louisiana. Today I'm going to be talking to you about nine things that you may want to know before you make a move to Baton Rouge. What's up guys, my name is Sean Ramos and I'm a licensed real estate agent in the state of Louisiana. So if you have any questions about making a move to or making a move in Louisiana, make sure you hit me up. My information is at the bottom of your screen right now and I am the one that's gonna answer all those calls, texts, and emails. If it's your first time checking out the channel, thanks for coming, but while you're here, make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell because I'm gonna be cranking out these videos all about living in Louisiana, specifically the Baton Rouge metro area. And as much as I love making these videos for you guys, I would love even more to help you with your real estate needs. So if you have any specific questions, please let me know and I would absolutely love to help you. So some of the things we're going to talk about are specific to Baton Rouge. And if you're local, you already know these things. But if you're moving from out of state, maybe you don't. And then some things are going to apply to South Louisiana as a whole. But nevertheless, you still should know these things if you're making a move here. First thing we're going to talk about is the housing market in the area. Now, we've seen a lot of appreciation over the past two years. But according to bestplaces.net, we're still 29% lower than a national average when we're talking about median home prices. From the last full month of data that I have, we were almost 19% year over year. So that means that the prices went up 19% in that 12 month period. And in the 12 months before that, they went up 6%. So for the past two years, we had about 25% appreciation. And I fully expect that we're gonna see home prices appreciate in the area, just not at the crazy pace that it's been going. I expect that we're gonna see a much slower, steady climb from here on out. So the next thing is the month supply of homes on the market. And the best way that I can think of to explain that if you're not sure what months of inventory are is that if not another house went on the market, it would take this amount of time for every house in the market to sell and get us down to zero. So if you go back to April, 2020, we had about a five month supply of homes on the market. And we started seeing a pretty sharp decline and it got all the way down to 1.1 months, which is a pretty serious seller's market. But now we're starting to see it trend back up. We're sitting at 2.2, which is still a seller's market, but I'm really starting to see in this market that buyers do have a little more negotiating power and the sellers don't get to dictate all the terms anymore. We're starting to see some price reductions and we're starting to see sellers give some concessions again as far as helping the buyers pay their closing costs, which is very helpful right now because these interest rates are up and buyers can use that extra money to help buy the rate down some. And the last number is days on market. See, I used to go into a listing appointment telling a seller that, look, this could take 30, 60, 90, 120 days, if not more, to get your house sold. But right now, the average days on market is six. But I'm certain now that we're gonna start seeing that number tick back up and buyers, like I said, have a little more negotiating power and can get things from the sellers that they haven't been able to get in the past year or two. Okay, number two, we're gonna talk about the weather. So it is hot and wet here. So we have just super hot, humid, and a lot of times uncomfortable summers in Southern Louisiana. It's so damn hot. June, July, and August tend to be our hottest months with average highs in the 90s. And it's not crazy to see the heat index get to over 100 degrees when you factor in the humidity. But if you can stay in the heat and you wanna be outside, you can definitely enjoy it because we get on average 214 sunny days, which is higher than a national average. But you're gonna to have to make sure you stay hydrated. You're gonna to wanna to carry water with you everywhere you go. And you definitely wanna make sure you're protected from that sun. You're gonna need sunblock and you're gonna need chapstick. And another thing to consider are your air conditioner systems in your car and at your house. So make sure you're changing those AC filters and you're gonna to wanna to have the unit serviced. There are companies here that will come out every quarter or some every six months. But at minimum, make sure that you get somebody out at least once a year to clean and service that unit and make sure it's keeping you cool. Because AC is just not something you can do without around here. And it's wet. We get on average 63 inches of rain a year. And the national average is something like 38 inches. A little bit of stain gang rain and big old fat rain. Rain that flew in sideways. And sometimes rain even seemed to come straight up. And it comes out to like 109 days of precipitation a year, which I think it, when you do the math, it comes out to like something like every third day it rains. But we do have these drier periods at times, but like right now during the summer, it 
rains literally every day. It's really rare to make it through a whole day without at least an afternoon shower. But you're gonna see regular thunderstorms, it's just something you have to deal with. But if you're not a big fan of the cold weather, this may be the perfect place for you because our winters tend to be pretty mild. December, January, and February are the coldest months. We'll typically see lows in the 40s and every now and then we'll see a little cold spill where we get some freezing temperatures, but you rarely see those freezing temperatures during the day. So the national average of snowfall per year is 28 inches across the country. But here in South Louisiana, it's zero. Actually, it's 0 0.1. So don't expect to see much snow here. You're likely not getting a white Christmas. No white Christmas with no, no snow. snow. Every now and then we'll get a little dusting, but it doesn't last long. But I'll tell you what, when we do get a little snow or ice, you're not going anywhere. Everything is shut down. Nobody's going to school. Nobody's going to work. All the bridges are shut down, and you really can't get too many places without crossing a bridge in South Louisiana. Talk about keeping people off the roads. That's a main priority for state police, and they are urging everyone to stay home. Number three, the food is freaking amazing. Like, I would argue that we have some of the best food in the country and maybe even the world. I'm telling you, there are seafood restaurants, and then there are Louisiana seafood restaurants. Years ago, before I even knew what I was going to do with my life, I had gotten a CDL, and I was driving trucks all over this country. And I'm going through Indiana one night, I stopped to get something to eat, and I see fried shrimp on the menu. So I'm thinking, man, I'm a little homesick, so let's get a little taste at home, have some fried shrimp, and it'll be a good night. Man, and what I got was just straight up frozen TV dinner cooked in a microwave. It was disgusting. It's real bad. It's like eating a hot circle of garbage. And it wasn't really until then, until I got away from Louisiana, that I realized just how good we have it here as far as the food goes. So if you make it down to the Baton Rouge area and you're not from around here, you've got to try all of the Louisiana staples. It's not just the seafood, it's the jambalaya, gumbo, the etouffee, boudin, the alligator. Who would have thought such an ugly creature could taste so good? But if you get a chance to try some fried alligator, do yourself a favor, try it, let me know what you think in the comments. But it's not just those Louisiana specialties. We've got awesome barbecue, steakhouses, Mexican, Italian, sushi. In fact, if you go downtown, check out Tsunamis. You can have some of the best sushi in town. You can sit up on the rooftop and enjoy it with a great view of the Mississippi River. It's just a fun place to hang out. Number four, Louisiana is one of the least healthy states in the country. No matter what list you look on, you're gonna find that we're at or near the bottom of every list in just about every category that they keep track of when it comes to health. Now, I'm certainly not bragging about this, but it's something you wanna keep in mind if you're coming down here to make sure that you don't fall into the trap. This is one Louisiana tradition that you're not gonna to wanna to take part of. Now, my guess is that it's a combination of some of the other things that we've talked about that contribute to this. Now, it does get extremely hot here, so people tend to wanna to stay inside in the air conditioner, so there's probably not as much outdoor activity as you may see in some of the stays with nicer weather. And I think maybe you couple that with the fact that the food is so good and people like to eat here, fried food is a really prevalent thing. So obesity, heart disease, and diabetes are all real problems in South Louisiana. But there are some people out there that are trying to turn things around for us here in Louisiana. Oshner Health is pushing to get us into the top 40 by the year 2030. They started up a health advisory board and they've opened up five health centers across the state with 10 more coming. And the Louisiana Department of Health has started their own initiative called Well Ahead Louisiana and they're pushing a healthy lifestyle across the state as well. Number five, we don't have any pro sport teams here in Baton Rouge. But if you're an NFL or an NBA fan, we do have the New Orleans Saints and Pelicans and it's only about an hour and 15 minute drive from here. So that's something you can go check them out in a day. You have access to pro sports here. They're just not in town. Now, as far as pro baseball goes, it's a little more of a drive. Houston Astros are going to be the closest team to here. It's about a four, four and a half hour drive to get there. So it's not a day trip. It's more of a weekend thing. Now, back in the old days, there was a minor league hockey team called the Baton Rouge Kingfish. And the only reason I even think about them is because I read an article recently that said they may be making a comeback. But Baton Rouge is a college town. This is Tiger country. I'm talking about the LSU Tigers. So basketball, baseball, softball, they're all consistently pretty good, but... LSU football is king around here. If you're not from here and you've never been to an LSU game, 
there's nothing like Death Valley on a Saturday night. It's one of the craziest places in the country, and it's consistently talked about as one of the most intimidating places for people to come in and play. Currently, the stadium holds over 102,000 people, and it gets nuts. Just to give you an idea how rowdy the fans can get here, you go all the way back to 1988, they had what they call the earthquake game. Now, if you're local, you know all about this, but if you're not from here, pretty cool story. Back then, the stadium held less than 80,000 people. When Auburn was in town, they were beating us six to nothing. So with less than two minutes left, LSU goes downfield, scores a touchdown, and the crowd goes so wild that a seismograph that was about 1,000 yards from the stadium on campus registered an earthquake. And to this day, it's still known as the earthquake game. Number six, we do flood in South Louisiana. So whether you're from here or not, you probably remember from the news in 2016 that Louisiana had a major catastrophic flood event. So they call it a 500 year flood, so it's not likely it's ever gonna happen again, but it's absolutely a possibility. So what happened is the storm was above us and it just wouldn't leave, and it just dumped 20 to 30 inches of rain, depending on the area, within a two or three day period. But even when the rain went away, the rivers continued to come up, and it's estimated that about 90,000 houses were affected. Lots of those houses didn't have flood insurance, so they had to rely on FEMA and SBA loans to put their houses back together. And if you were like me and lucky enough not to actually flood, you 100% had friends or family that it did affect. It was really just a nightmare situation for everybody. So I'm not trying to scare you off. Like I said, that's a 500 year flood event, they say, so it's not likely to happen again. That was just kind of a worst case scenario. But you definitely do have to take flooding into consideration when you're figuring out where you're gonna live here. Now, if you're buying a house, you'll see that there are three different flood classifications that you need to know. A and AE means that you are gonna be required by your mortgage lender to get flood insurance. If you can find a house that's in flood zone X, they consider that an extremely low risk of flooding and you're not required to have the extra insurance. And what you're gonna see is the higher the flood insurance premium, the more of a chance they think you have to actually flood. So I see policies go from 500 all the way up to the thousands. So it makes a huge difference on the affordability of your house. So even if you don't mind the extra risk of actually flooding, you're gonna mind the extra money that it costs as far as your mortgage payment goes. But that's where I'll come in handy. When you're looking for a house, it's, it's not a searchable thing in the MLS where you can search for houses that are in flood zone X, but I can help you find exactly what you're looking for. Most of the clients that I help are specifically looking for flood zone X because they don't want just the added expense of the flood insurance. But I say, even if you do get that house in flood zone X and don't need the insurance, absolutely get it because 2016 was a perfect example of even if you're in a low risk area, it's still a possibility that something crazy could happen. Number seven, Louisiana is the sportsman's paradise. That is so ingrained in people here that it's even printed on our license plates. But Louisiana definitely has an abundance of fish and wildlife. There's over 1.6 million acres of area managed by the Department of Wildlife and Fisheries. So every species of game and fresh and saltwater fish that are in the state are available to you. So we'll go fishing first. There's tons of freshwater and saltwater options available. So whether you have a boat or you're fishing from the bank, there's tons of options. East Baton Rouge alone has 16 stocked ponds in their public parks. And if you're a hunter, you'll have the option of getting into a private lease or hunting public land. I know there are spots across the country where the deer season only goes a couple weeks, but down here in Louisiana, you're looking at a four month deer season that starts at the beginning of October and goes all the way through January. While hunting and fishing are huge here, it's not all about that. There are plenty of options for camping, canoeing, hiking, bike riding. If you can stay in the heat here in Louisiana, there's plenty out there for you to do. Number eight, the bugs here are bad. So these wet, humid summers that we have here in Louisiana are perfect environments for mosquitoes, roaches, spiders, silverfish, and these love bugs. I don't even know if these things are in other parts of the country, but here you 100% better have a membership to one of the local car washes because the love bugs are always gonna be on the front of your vehicle and on your windshield and you're constantly gonna have to be spraying these things off because they'll ruin the paint and they just, once you leave them on there, they're hard to get off. So you're running through the car wash almost daily to keep the love bugs off your vehicle. The mosquitoes are killer. If you can't screen in your back porch or patio and you like to be outside in the evenings, then you better invest heavily in thermocells and citronella candles to do what you can to keep these things away. And then the termites. So this is something that I see pop up every so often as a real estate agent. Every house we sell usually gets a termite inspection just to verify the house is free and clear of any active termites. In Southern Louisiana, they say it's not a matter of if you're gonna get termites, it's just a matter of when. So if you're working with me and you're looking to buy a house, we will absolutely make sure that termites are not a problem for the house you're buying. And it's also 100% a good idea to have a good termite company come out to the house, treat it before you have a problem, and that way if you ever do have an issue, you're covered. Number nine, the traffic here can be a beast. 
I'm lucky enough with what I do for a living that I don't have to get out and commute to and from work every morning. So I'm not getting stuck in some of this heavy battery traffic that we have. I think the peak times are gonna be anywhere from 6.30 to 9 in the morning and then from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. Sometimes I do get out in it, but on a daily basis I see people on Facebook complaining about being stuck in traffic. Now they've definitely done some things to make it better. So on the east side of town I-12, there used to be a really bad bottleneck at the O'Neill Lane exit where it would go from three lanes down to two lanes for everybody that was heading out of Baton Rouge into Livingston Parish or further out. But eventually they widened that to three lanes all the way through past through Denham Springs and eventually into Satsuma. So now it's a lot better and there's not near as much congestion as there used to be. Before the traffic would back up all the way through town. Now I find it tends to slow down some but it doesn't come to a stop like it used to. And also on the east side of town, but on I-10 heading towards New Orleans, they also widened that to three lanes all the way down to the Highland exit, which helped a lot. And then they eventually went down to the Prairieville Geismer exit in Ascension Parish. And it's pretty smooth sailing through there now. On the west side of town, it's a different story. If you're coming from West Baton Rouge on I-10 over the Mississippi River Bridge into Baton Rouge, it is a nightmare. That's gotta be probably the worst bottleneck on the interstate in the country. There's good news and bad news. So the bad news is it's gonna get worse before it gets better. The good news is there is a $1.2 billion plan in the works that's gonna widen all that and hopefully ease some of that congestion. Starting in 2024, they're supposed to start construction on widening the interstate all the way from LA 415 in West Baton Rouge Parish, all the way to the 1012 split in East Baton Rouge. But where the bad news comes in, where I say it's gonna get worse before it gets better, is everything I'm reading says they're gonna close one lane of traffic in each direction next year. Oh my God. They say it's gonna speed the whole project up and save a ton of money over the course of the whole project, so we'll see. I'm glad that I don't have to make the drive through there on a regular basis. So if you're thinking about moving down here, that's something you're gonna to wanna to consider. If you're working in West Baton Rouge Parish, I would probably look for a house in West Baton Rouge Parish. And same thing for East Baton Rouge. I wouldn't wanna live across the bridge and have to make that drive every day. All right, that's all I've got. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Things we talked about today are just some of the things I think you should consider if you're thinking about making a move to Baton Rouge. Of course, there are more, but these are the ones that I narrowed it down to just for this specific video. If you haven't done it yet, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell. And as a reminder, I am a licensed real estate agent in the state of Louisiana. As much as I love making these videos, I would love even more to help you with your real estate needs. So again, my information is at the bottom of your screen right now. Make sure you hit me up if there's anything I can help you with. I am the one that's gonna be answering those text calls and emails, so if there's anything I can help you with, it will be my pleasure to do so. All right, guys, until next time, enjoy your week, and I'll see you on the next one.